everybody. Welcome back to A Late Show. You know my guest tonight from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Black Swan, and Bad Moms. She now stars in the new film, Four Good Days. I'm done. I want to come home. Are you done? Or are you out of drugs? I, I, I ended it with Eric. He's gone. I've been living on my own on the streets for, for maybe like, like a week or maybe even more. And... You know, I, 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 I've been thinking about all the things that you said to me since I was like a little girl. And, and I've had these like realizations, like these big, big realizations that like I, I, I want to I wanna go back to school and, and I want to get a job and I just want to get my, my kids back. Molly, right? stop. Just stop. I've heard this speech for 10 years. Oh, I need to be home. You know, I do not do well when I'm left on my own. And I want to detox. Please welcome to A Late Show. Mila Kunis. Hey, Mila, thanks for being here. I'm so excited to do this show. I am too. I'm a genuine fan, and I've always been so nervous about doing your show. Why? Why? I'm a pussycat. Why would you, why would you be nervous about know, doing the show? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's entirely my fault if you were nervous. I, I hope you have a lovely time tonight. I've always wanted to talk to you too. I can't believe this is the first time that we're talking. Um, I, I found out some interesting things in the last 24 hours of research on you. I had no idea that you were on Baywatch. When I was first told, like, wait a second, I don't remember her running. I don't remember her running down the the beach, saving people's lives in, in a yeah. in a seductive way. And they said, no, 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 much younger than that. You were on twice. Here we go. Yeah. There it is. Oh yeah. There you go. But also, you gotta you gotta right specify there. that I was on twice playing two different. Characters. This, this, this is why. <laughs> this is why it's good to have you as a guest. There you are again. So, what's going on? What were these two characters you were? Were you playing? Well, in one of the episodes, I was blind, and I got lost in the forest. <laughs> and the other in the in the beach forest, <laughs> yeah. the, the the forest yeah. by the bay, and so <laughs> li lifeguards had to rescue you from a forest. Yes, Stephen. This may have been. This was like during the Pamela Anderson days because my dad insisted on taking me to set, and so sure. did my grandfather, and so sure. did every man in my family. Sure. Was like, we'll take her to set. We got this one. Yeah. Um, but yes, I was blind, and then the other one, I was like a, a, a what was I? Like a kid that that was like, oh, help, help! Someone's drowning. I think. But you weren't you know drowning. What? Someone else was drowning. You were the. Yes, but here's the kicker. In the episode where I was the blind kid, we ended the episode on me boogie boarding. And I, at the age of like nine. So this, this is you. This is you. That's yeah. me boogie boarding, but I'm blind. And so I, however old I was when I did this, I was like, how, how am I boogie boarding? I'm blind. Like I couldn't understand how... Wouldn't I have adult supervision somewhere around we've, me? We've rescued the poor blind girl from the forest, put her on a rafter, and push her to sea. You know? Baywatch. Quality television back did in the you, day. Did you get to hassle the Hoff? Did you get to spend some time with Hasselhoff in this? I do. You know what? It was. I have really great memories from Baywatch because they were lovely to me. I have photos with David Hasselhoff. I have photos with, like, Pamela Anderson. And I got to keep that bathing suit, which to me which at one? that time. Th this right here? Yes. And I was, my, in real life, we were really poor. Yeah. And so bathing suits were like, that's not going to happen. And so I was like, oh, who cares that I'm on Baywatch? I got to keep a bathing suit. And I was, I felt like the coolest kid that summer. Uh, your husband, uh, the, the yeah. lovely and talented Ashton Kutcher, uh, yeah. Hollywood hunk. He's hunk yeah, pretty, pretty right? Okay. Yeah, pretty hot. Pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, this is much rarer. He is a venture capital hunk. He's invested, yeah. like, got on the ground floor. Of, I remember we had him on the old, old old Comedy Central gig a million years ago, and he's talking about this thing, this Airbnb thing. I'm like, that sounds like a terrible idea. And, like, but he's he's on the ground floor like that. He's on the ground floor of, what, Acorn? Like that? Yeah. Does he, is, yeah. do, you, do you vet any of this stuff? Does he come to you and say, hey, honey, we're going to put our money in this, and you go, stop. No, no one wants a, 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 a service that delivers fiber optic cable and chocolate cake. Yes, this happens nightly. 
The sad part is it happens probably too often. And the great, the, the best part about him is he's really smart about including me in everything and making sure that I'm aware of everything that's happening. He's also really smart at knowing that sometimes you shouldn't listen to your wife. So there have been multiple, like I am a big consumer. I am, I feel like I have really good um, gut instincts on consumer goods. And so if it's coming out of our personal account, I do vet all the companies. If so it's like if you want, if you, if you would buy that product, you figure everybody would buy that product. Uh, you know, I am uh, yes and no. I do do my own groceries. I do see what's on the middle shelf. I do acknowledge what's on the top shelf. I'm on a bunch of mommy blogs. And so there is an, an essence of like, I do, I am aware of like consumer goods in a certain demographic mm. um, that he does fully trust me in, but that's for our personal investing. And okay. then for the VP stuff, you know, you have to, that I am not the right person to ask, but he'll bring me companies and be like, here's a company we're thinking of investing in. And early into our um, dating, two things came up. He was like, hey, there's this company, it's kind of like a ride share. So my dad in real life is a cab driver, was a cab driver, he's retired now. And so I grew up on, on you know, on tips from, from a cab driver like that. So he's like, there's this company, it's kind of like a cab company, but anybody can drive the cab. I was like, that's the worst idea ever. Why would this, what do you, and he was like, let me get you this thing, it's called Uber. Let me just order it for you, you can test this out. And I was like, I, you're gonna put me in a car with a stranger? What is wrong with you? Like I was furious at him. That was first. Second time, it was, he sat me down. He's like, hey, babe, I got to explain this thing to you. Tell me if I'm crazy. And I was like, cool. What is it, babe? He's like, there's this thing. It's like mining for money. It's called like cryptocurrency. And there's a company called like, Bitcoin. this is eight years ago, eight plus years ago. He was like, it's called Bitcoin. He explains this whole thing to me. And I was like, well, is it FDIC insured? And he was like, no, that's the point. It's not. And I was like, well, then who's going to make sure it's safe? And he was like, that's the point. And I was like, well, I think this is a horrible idea. And he went, cool, we're investing in it. So he didn't listen to me. I mean, this happens all the time. Wait, wait, wait. This so is you, guys went in, you guys went into Bitcoin eight years ago? Yeah. Damn, girl. <laughs> I can do math. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. My husband's really smart. I mean, God, he is just- I'll tell you a quick he, story. I'll tell you a quick story. I know this is your interview, but I'm gonna tell you a quick story. No, tell me. Tell me one, of my writer, one of my writer, writers uh, on the old <laughs> show, a guy named Rob Dubbin, hi Rob. He was always bringing me like a uh, text. He was, he was the first guy who said, you gotta be on Twitter. This was like, you know, 10 years ago. And he said to me, hey, there's this thing called Bitcoin and uh, it's gonna be a thing. And people are right now are using it for like drug deals and like hiring assassins, but it's yeah. gonna be a thing. <laughs> And right. I said, okay. And we like to explain stuff to the audience with jokes. And I said, so what do we need to do? He goes, well, we need to get some computers and start mining it. I said, what does that mean? And he tries to explain blockchain to me. And I said, right. Every, my eyes would roll back in my head and said, forget it, we're not doing this. He reminds me on a weekly basis that if we had started mining Bitcoin 10 years ago, I could stop this nonsense comedy career at this point. It, I feel like an idiot. But this happens all, there's companies all the time that he'll talk about that to me seem so ludicrous. Why would I want to sleep on someone's couch and pay for it? Like, it's ludicrous. And yet, here we are, and I Airbnb everything, I Uber everywhere, and I use cryptocurrency. So guess what? I've never been happier to be wrong. <laughs> we're, all, we're all working for Ashton Kutcher eventually. We have to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, uh, Mila and I are going to talk about Glenn Close's uh, shaking that booty. <laughs> 